everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back today with another set guide and review, and this time it is for Panini's Chromium Baseball Set 2022 Panini Prism. But is it a set that's worth buying? What are the best break teams? Should you pass or should you buy in? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is with One Cent Sports Cards 2022 Panini Prism Baseball Set Guide and Review. So the end of baseball is upon us. The playoffs are about to start, and we get a Panini drop of 2022 Panini Prism. And in this set guide and review, what we're trying to do is figure out how good Panini Prism really is. We do that by using the exclusive one cent sensational set rating, which is the most in-depth set rating you're going to find anywhere on the internet. And in this set guide and review, what we're going to cover off on, first the set highlights tell you what the set's all about tell you all the different buying formats you can get Panini Prism in, tell you what the key cards are. We'll cover off on all the parallels, the inserts, and the autos, and I'm even going to give you six teams that I would recommend targeting in breaks. And if you want to know how good all 30 teams are in breaks, I'm going to give you a break cheat sheet, which will tell you all those answers. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set rating, where we're going to find out how good Panini Prism really is. And we'll wrap everything up by telling you where it ranks with all of the other sets that have been released so far in the baseball card collecting season. So before we begin, I got one more thing for you. Be sure to to throw over to first hit that like button for me it's the best way you can support the channel and if you like these set guides and reviews be sure to subscribe to the channel and if you want to see the reviews first you got to hit that bell notification finally if you haven't checked out my patreon page please do so that's how you get into my breaks that's how you can have me submit psa cards at no additional cost to you that's where you get discord community access retail restock links so much more you can join for as little as two bucks there is a link in the description below and i would love to have you as a patreon so let's begin panini prism 2022 first thing to know it's a parallel driven set with a rookie focus it is in its eighth year of production started back in 2012 took a little bit of a hiatus from 2016 to 18 and it came back in 2019 and has been running ever since the base set features a ton of rookies it also has current major league stars and a few retired hall of famers and greats we're going to find this set everywhere it's available in hobby and retail formats and this year we have a three-tiered 270 card checklist what do i mean by tiers well the first 100 cards are tier one the second 100 cards are tier two and the third 70 cards are tier three the higher the tier the rarer the card now there were 250 cards last year so we have a little bit more cards in this year's checklist than we did last year you're going to find three autographs in every hobby box and as is the case with panini prism there is a giant parallel rainbow this year we got 41 different colors a lot of those colors are going to be exclusive to the different buying format that you're getting into and there's probably even more colors that are going to surface outside of the 41 color parallel rainbow the ultra rare color blast and lava flow inserts are returning for 2022 they were there last year those are going to be ssp hits great if you can hit them the color blast one a very very popular insert set from panini and we also have four auto subsets that are going to be featured in 2022 they are debut signatures pro penmanship rookie autos and a very descriptive signatures subset <laughs> We can also get hot boxes. We're gonna, they're going to land one per case, and they include 24 navy blue and Carolina blue parallels. You can see what that looks like on the right with the Fernando Tatis card. One thing to also mention on Panini Prism, most of you already know, but in case you don't, Panini Prism, Panini products in general do not have Major League Baseball logos. They are an MLB Players Association only release, and as such, you will not get logos 
or team names on the cards. Finally, we have Quick Pitch Hobby Boxes returning for a second year, and what those have in them are 10 Donut Circle Parallels and one Auto, a little bit of a cheaper buy-in there. And speaking of buy-ins, let's cover off on all of those different formats. We can start with the Hobby Case, gonna have 12 boxes per case, 12 packs per box, 12 cards per pack, that's going to get you 1,728 total cards. Current price on that, going to run you $1,680. So your cost per card comes in just under a buck at 97 cents. And you're guaranteed to get 36 autos, 36 silver prisms, 48 blue prisms, 60 red prisms, and one hot box. If you want to just get a hobby box, 12 packs per box, 12 cards per pack, 144 total cards, going to cost you about 140 bucks online right now, and the cost per card stays at 97 cents. You get three autos, three silver prisms, four blue prisms, and five red prisms. You can also get a first off the line hobby box. Those are going to be available on the secondary market and on online retailers only. They were available last week on the Panini website. Right now, they're going for about 350 bucks. And what you get in those are 12 packs per box, 12 cards per pack, 144 total cards. You get three autos. One of them is a first off the line, low numbered auto. Then you get four first off the line shimmer parallels and three silver prisms. You can also get a quick pitch case. 20 boxes per case, 10 packs per box, nine cards per pack, 1800 total cards. Got to go for $2,100. Price per card comes up to $1.17. You do get 20 autos and 200 exclusive Donut Circle parallels. If you get the quick pitch box, that's going to get you 90 total cards. $105 is the current price. Cost per card still at $1.17. It's got one auto and 10 exclusive Donut Circle parallels. For our retail, we've got a mega box. There's going to be 10 packs in the box, four cards per pack, plus you get a 12 card parallel pack. So you get 52 total cards, estimated price, probably 45 bucks. Maybe they're 50, but your cost per card get a hover around 90 cents. You do get one auto in those. And in that parallel pack, you're going to get 12 Carolina blue and pink prisms. You can also get a blaster box. That's going to have six packs per box, four cards per pack, plus one eight card parallel pack for 32 total cards will cost you $25. Cost per card goes down to 78 cents. You get four purple prisms and four white wave prisms in that box. You can also get a cello pack. That's going to have one pack, 12 cards per pack, plus a six card bonus pack, 18 total cards, $15 for the current price, your cost per card, 83 cents. And that's where you're going to find six red, white, and blue prism parallels. Finally, there might be additional formats possible based on retail locations and some surprises that Panini might throw out there. So what are the key cards we're going to be chasing? We'll start with rookies as we always do. Big lineup. We've got Mackenzie Gore, CJ Abrams, Bobby Witt Jr., Julio Rodriguez, Spencer Torkelson, Seiya Suzuki, Jake McCarthy, Stephen Kwan, Wander Franco, Bryson Stott, Nick Ladololo. We've got Hunter Green, Royce Lewis, O'Neill Cruz, and finally, Spencer Strider. So a great rookie lineup. There's a few names that I did not mention on here. Jeremy Pena being one of them, but there are a ton of rookies in this set and all of the big names that people have been chasing in 2022 are in the set. For our parallels, autos, and inserts, here's what we're going to be chasing. First, obviously the parallel rookie cards, those are going to hold some nice value and those SSPs, those color blast and lava flows, beautiful cards, great if you can hit them. You've also got the rookie class inserts as a nice rookie insert subset. The old school inserts, which is new for 2022. You've got championship stage inserts, which is also new for 2022. And the very popular stained glass inserts. Very cool cards. Some of those actually hold a little bit of value on the secondary market if you get them in the parallel versions. So a nice one there. For our autos, we've got the debut signature autos. That's going to be the place where we find a lot of those big rookies that have been released later in the season. Think Bobby Witt, Julio Rodriguez. That's where you're going to find their signatures in this set. We've got the rookie autos. 
that's where you're not going to find those signatures, but you will find plenty of other autos, Wander's in there. You got a ton of other ones. I think there's 105 total cards in the rookie auto subset. We, and we've got signatures autos. That's going to be all sorts of different players. And finally, we have pro penmanship autos, which are going to have retired grades, some current stars, and some very nice names on that checklist. So what are the base parallels? Well, I'm just going to show them on screen. Like I said, we got 41. You've got all sorts of different ones. I could read them all off, but we've got some unnumbered ones in this first column. So some of the more popular ones, the Cosmic Haze, the Giraffe card, the Red Velocity. We've got a lot of those red, white, and blues, which are exclusive to different formats. And then we've got more. We've got the Tiger Stripes, which is going to be exclusive to Hobby, White Sparkle, White Wave. And then we've got all the numbered ones. So you've got blue donut circles, blue mojos, red mojos, things like lime green, power plaid, which if you get one of those, they're very cool looking cards. There's even snake skin. And then a couple new ones like the bronze donut circles, the burgundy cracked ice to 25, and the first off the line ones. Those are all the ones numbered to seven. That's that purple shimmer, red shimmer, and the uh, shimmer. And then, of course, we have the Black Finite, one of one, the Black Velocity, one of one, and the Gold Vinyl, one of one. So a ton of different parallels. That's really what you're chasing in this set. So now let's cover off on the inserts. We have the Championship Stage that's got 10 cards in the subset with a parallel rainbow of silver, gold to 10, Black Finite, one of one, and Gold Vinyl, one of one. Then we have the SSP Color Blast. You can see what that looks like over there with the Ronald Acuna on the right. Ten cards in the subset. Ultra rare pulls. Awesome if you can get one. We have Emergent returning this year. That's got 15 cards in the subset with a small parallel rainbow. And then we have Fearless. Again, returning for another year. A giant parallel rainbow, which mimics the base parallel rainbows. 20 cards in that subset. Continuing on with the inserts. We've got Lumber Inc. returning for 2022. 10 cards in the subset with a small parallel rainbow. And new for 2022, we've got Old School. 10 cards in the set with a giant parallel rainbow that mimics the base set. And then we have Rookie Class. 30 cards in that subset. And that's got silver, gold, black finite, and gold vinyl parallels available. For our final inserts, We've got Sluggers, 15 cards in the subset with a small parallel rainbow. The awesome stained glass cards, only five cards in the subset, but it does have a giant parallel rainbow, again, mimicking the base set. And we have Stargazing coming back for another year. That's 15 cards in the subset with the smaller parallel rainbow that we've seen throughout the insert sets. Now for our autographs. Well, we've got debut signatures. That's the one where you're going to find a lot of rookies and a lot of the rookies that got called up later in the year. There's 28 cards in the subset, very small parallel breakdown. You're not going to find these in every box. You do get a silver, a gold, a black finite, and a gold vinyl parallel rainbow. We also have pro penmanship. That's going to feature all sorts of different retired stars, current stars. We've got nine cards in that set with a small parallel rainbow as well. And then the rookie autographs. That's where the big autofocus is going to lie for this set. 105 cards in the subset. A large parallel breakdown. A little bit different than the base set though. You've only got one unnumbered one, which is the silver prism, which is awesome. But then you've got like blue. You've got the donuts that are going to be available in those quick pitch boxes. You've got the shimmers that are available over in the first on the line boxes and all sorts of different ones. We do got a black finite one of one, a gold vinyl and a white sparkle one of one. Finally, we've got signatures, 25 cards in that subset with a small parallel breakdown as well. So with all that being said, a very straightforward set, not a lot new happening in Panini Prism 2022, kind of following their formula that they've had the last few years, but we got a ton of different rookies, a ton of different teams we can buy into. So what are the teams you should be chasing in breaks? Well, like I said, I'm going to give you six of them. And I always start with what I think the best team is. And I don't think it's a big surprise here. I'm going to go with the Tampa Bay Rays. 
But there's a reason why I'm not going with some other teams here. The Tampa Bay Rays have eight base cards, four rookie cards, eight inserts, and six autos. They've got the same four rookies that you have been chasing all year. Wander Franco, Fidal Brujan, Shane Baz, and Josh Lowe. You can also get a Drew Rasmussen auto, which I think is a kind of a nice ad there. But the reason I picked the Rays is Wander Franco is available in that rookie autos set, not just the debut signature set. So because those are going to be a little bit more common and land in boxes more, I think you got a better chance at hitting a Wander Franco than you do, say, a Julio Rodriguez or a Spencer Torkelson or a Bobby Witt. The Tampa Bay Rays, I believe, should still be ranked as the most expensive team in a pick-your-team break. If they're not, I would buy them because they're undervalued. If you can get them in a random team break, keep them. Don't trade them, obviously. You're chasing Wander. And don't forget that just because Wander's the big name, some of these other names like Shane Baz and Vidal Brujan, even Drew Rasmussen, some very nice names there. The Rays know how to develop their talent. So the Tampa Bay Rays, they're my best team. If you're looking for the most autos, you can actually look at four different teams, but we're going to cover off on the Kansas City Royals because I believe they have the most to offer. They've got 12 base cards, seven rookie cards, which is tied with the Cubs, Reds, and Rangers, four inserts, and 10 different autos. Now, you can get Bobby Witt and Olivares in there. Now, they don't have autos in the rookie auto subset they're only in that debut subset which is a little bit of a tougher pull so i think you're going to have a little bit longer odds chasing bobby witt than you will wander franco however they've still got jackson cower Whit merrifield autos and they've got five other rookie card autos not very big names but they do have a ton of content so the kansas city royals are probably going to be a pretty expensive team especially with the amount of content they have Keep them in a random team break. In a pick your team break, I think this is the team that you're going to have to find it at the right price. Don't overpay because the odds are going to be a little bit long on hitting that Bobby Witt, which is the big chase card out of that team set. So, you know, a little bit of buyer beware there. But with the amount of content that they have, even if you don't hit the Bobby Witt, you probably got a decent chance at hitting some of these other autos. And if you can get one of the parallel ones, you probably are still doing okay in a pick your team break. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, we're going to cover off on the Cincinnati Reds. However, they are tied with seven rookies overall with the Royals, the Angels, and the Rangers. But the Reds, they've got 10 base cards, seven rookie cards, four inserts, and again, 10 autos. And I really like the Reds as a team overall. If I was to pick any team that I would buy personally in a pick your team break, I might go with the Reds because I don't think they're going to be super, super expensive. Going to be up there because they got a lot of content, but they won't be top three even. They might be, but maybe top five and they might even fall out of the top five. But here's what you're chasing. Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, they've got those debut autos, and there's also five other rookie card autos in there. So keep in mind, Hunter Green, Nick Lodolo, that's in that debut set, not in the rookie auto set. So kind of the same thing going on here that we had with the Kansas City Royals. But they've got so much content, they're not going to be as expensive as the Royals, I don't think. And you've still got some, I get it, it's pitcher autos, but... Go tell me about pitcher autos again, and then tell me about Jacob deGrom without telling me about Jacob deGrom. Pitcher autos are high risk, I get it, but I don't think the Reds are going to be that expensive in a pick your team break. If you get them in a random team break, keep them. If you don't get them, you might be able to trade for the Reds. Don't be afraid to offer up your team for the Reds because I think it's going to give you a pretty, pretty decent return on your investment. If you're looking for a solid choice, I'm going to go with the Mariners here. There's some other ones that I contemplated, but the Mariners do have 10 base cards, three rookie cards, three inserts, and three autos. I'm going with the Mariners because J-Rod does have an auto in here, plus he has the base cards as well. They also have Cal Raleigh and Matt Brash autos, but really this is all about the Julio Chase. This is the one time where I might say even the unautographed card totally worth buying into the Mariners probably going to be overpriced in my opinion if you buy into a pick your team break 
If you get him in a random team break, though, you keep him unless you want to trade for maybe the Rays. That might be the only trade I would make on that. But keep in mind, because Julio Rodriguez does have those base cards and Panini Prism parallels, even in baseball, do tend to hold a nice return on the secondary market, especially graded ones, that Julio Rodriguez chase is pretty tough to pass up. So if you want to pony up for the cash, maybe pay a little premium for the hot player of the moment, go ahead and look at the Seattle Mariners. But I'm also going to give you two sleepers. We've got the St. Louis Cardinals. They've got seven base cards, only two rookies, six inserts, and six autos. However, I believe that their auto lineup is more strong than most other teams in this set. They've got Lars Nupar, who is a rookie that has had a very good second half, is really kind of coming to his own on a good Cardinals team. Juan Yepes had a great first half, fallen off a little bit in the second half, but has definitely been a contributor throughout the season. And then you've got some big names in there like Mark McGuire, Paul Goldschmidt, who should be winning NL MVP this year. Dylan Carlson's in there. So we've got a lot of good autos that we can pull from the Cardinals. And I don't think they're going to be that expensive. Maybe a middle of the road team. If you get kind of a middle of the road team that you don't like too much in a random team break, try and trade for the Cardinals. They've got good autos. And then on top of that, in a pick your team break, you might be able to steal these, especially if you're on like whatnot or something, and it's like a sudden death for the Cardinals, you might be able to get them pretty cheap. So don't sleep on the Cardinals. My second sleeper going to be the Arizona Diamondbacks. They've got 10 base cards, six rookie cards, two inserts, and six autos. I'm picking the Diamondbacks because I believe their rookie class is a little underrated in the hobby right now. You got Seth Beer. Jake McCarthy, who has been absolutely on fire in the second half. Tyler Gilbert, Luis Frijas is in there. I spelt his name wrong. Just, you should probably murder me in the comments because I had a typo in my thing because that's what happens on YouTube. But uh, Luis Frijas is in there um, and Jake McCarthy. So again, a lot of good rookie autos that I think are maybe a little bit undervalued and not appreciated in the hobby quite enough. Jake McCarthy is starting to get a little bit of love, but Seth Beer's kind of been low. Tyler Gilbert, you know, hey, we got a pitcher, but the Diamondbacks, again, they've got enough content to play with any of the other teams in this set. Definitely a team that you could probably steal in a random team break in a trade. And in a pick your team break, the Diamondbacks never really go for that much money. You could get them on the cheap. If you get lucky with some of these autos, I think you're doing pretty good with the Arizona Diamondbacks. So don't sleep on them either. But if you want to know how good all 30 teams are, let's just dig right into the break team cheat sheet. For my top tier teams, obviously we've covered off on a few of these. The Mariners I got in there because of the Julio Rodriguez chase. And then we've got the Pirates because you've got O'Neill Cruz. A lot of these teams you see up there, I've got Detroit because of Spencer Torkelson. The Braves, a little bit of a... Maybe top tier, middle tier team, but I got them in the top tier here. And the Angels I have in here because they also have, uh, you know, Reed Detmers, Brandon Marsh are in there. A lot of people have kind of forgotten about them because they've been out since Series 1 way back in February and March. So a lot of people kind of forgot about it. Just know with the Angels, you cannot get a Mike Trout auto and Shohei Otani does not have autos in this set either. For our second tier. Some surprises here. I've got the Guardians in here. The Guardians actually have quite a bit of content. They've been one of the worst teams all season long. And then we've also got the Washington Nationals, which have not been a great team. But the Nationals have a surprising amount of autos, a lot of different rookie autos. Some other teams in here that are kind of surprises, maybe not surprises, but the Marlins, because of the amount of young players they have in their system, I put them in here because, again, we're looking at the rookie auto checklist. And as is always true with Panini products, and I don't know why this is, but Houston has a ton of content. Like And and every Panini product, they have a ton of content, and they do here as well. So Houston, another nice one. And one team to also not sleep on is going to be those Chicago Cubs. The Chicago Cubs have been a bad team all season and breaks, but they have a surprising amount of content here. I believe it's like seven or eight different autos you can pick, and they actually have a lot of other different inserts and a lot of different base cards. So don't sleep on the Cubs either. 
And finally, for the third tier, these are the teams I'd recommend staying away from. Some surprises down here. The Dodgers, which have been a fairly decent team this season, but the Dodgers just do not have hardly any rookie autos. I think Andre Jackson's the only one. And you can get a Cody Bellinger auto, I guess, if that's what you're looking for. And then the other big surprise here is going to be the two New York teams, the Yankees, which typically are always in the top tier. They've only got like two autos. It's Luis Gill, and I forget who the other one is, but they just don't have a lot of content in this set. And the Mets are kind of the same way. I think Tyler Meagle is going to be the Mets chase out of this set. So just not a lot happening there. And no surprises with some of these other teams, the Rockies, the Giants, the A's, and the uh, Brew Crew, who've kind of been at the bottom of this list throughout 2022. So those are the teams I would recommend. A lot of middle tier teams. We've got enough top tier teams to keep things interesting, though, with this set. So that is what is going to bring us to the one cent sensational set rating. What is it? Well, it's the most in-depth rating system on the internet. What I do, I break the set down into 10 different categories, each category being worth one to 10 points. Then we add up all of the points and that's what gives us a final sensational set rating score using that scale that you see at the bottom of your screen, which tells us how good the set really is. Then what we do is we compare the Panini Prism set with the scores that it's got the last couple years. So we can see if the set's getting better, if it's getting worse, and then we end it by comparing it to all of the other sets that have been released in 2022. So let's dig right in. For 2022 Panini Prism, our 10 categories, our first one going to be Appeal, and I've got it at a 6.5. It takes a knock because it does not have MLB logos. That is a automatic turnoff for some people. We mention that every time we do Panini, and I will still get comments saying, no logos, not for me. So I get that it is not for everyone. However, it is a Chromium product very much in the Topps Chrome realm, and Panini Prism is one of the more popular products in some of the other sports. And so when people cross over from baseball to basketball to football, all of that stuff, Panini Prism has a very good name in the hobby for collectability. So I go ahead and give it a 6.5. For the base set checklist, I'm going to give it an 8.5. It's a very good checklist for rookies. We've got all the rookies that you were looking for in 2022. Not a lot missing. So I go ahead and give it an 8.5. For the auto checklist, I'm dropping the auto checklist to a 5.5. I think there's a lot of filler in that rookie autos subset at 105 cards. And in that subset, they do not have some of the big autos that people would like to see. Julio Rodriguez, CJ Abrams. All of those names. They do have those in the debut autos, however, and they've got a pretty decent checklist over in the pro penmanship and some of the other ones. Keep in mind, we also have a lot of sticker autos. The rookie autos won't be, but the sticker autos are going to be in pro penmanship and stuff like that. So just keep that in mind. The auto checklist going to have a lot of filler. So I give it a 5.5. For our inserts, parallels, variations, stuff like that, we've got a seven on that because we do have the two SSPs, the Lava Flow and the Color Blast, which are awesome. We've got some returning favorites with fireworks and stuff like that, but we've added some other ones like Old School, and we give it a seven because of the Parallel Rainbow. It's an amazing Parallel Rainbow. It's one of the most impressive rainbows you can collect in all of the hobby, so I go ahead and give it a seven. For our pack run and production odds, I'm going to give it a 3.5. Panini Baseball does not get produced as much as, say, some of the other sports. However, it does get produced a lot. It's available, as most Panini products are, all over the place. So we've got retail, and with production runs being up, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 3.5. When we talk about pack odds, pulling some of those bigger autos going to be pretty tough as well. That's another reason why we go down to 3.5. For the car, card quality, I would love to go higher, but Panini Prism has a history of bad cuts, not very good quality control, and some of the cards even having like some peeling and stuff. I've seen all sorts of issues. So although I like the card stock that they use, and some of them are very beautifully printed, because of the quality control issues that Panini continues to be plagued with, I can't go over a 6.5. For the historical value, 
It is not going to be a top dollar historical value card because it does not have MLB logos. However, if you get the cards graded and if it's a parallel, you'll be surprised when you go look at some of the resale prices for Panini Prism baseball products over on eBay and ComC and sites like that. It does hold value and it is like not nearly as expensive as Topps Chrome. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a six. And speaking of cost value, like how much value do we get out of the box? For our cost value, I give it a six also. Because these boxes aren't that expensive and you get three autos, and chances are one or two of those autos is going to be a parallel auto. Plus you get all of the rookies, and some of those can be parallels as well. All of that means that, especially early on, I think it's going to be a fairly decent box when it comes to return on value. More often than not, no box is going to return 100% of value. Some might get lucky and return much more of that. But I do think that overall, with your parallels and with some of the rookies that you've gotten here, you've got a decent shot at getting a fair amount of value back from the box you buy. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a six. For artistic value, I'm going to give it a six as well. I don't think they've pushed the envelope that much. I like the color blast insert, but the reality is we don't have a lot new. The design from Panini Prism is kind of consistent year to year. So we're not talking about, you know, crazy new designs or anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a six. It's a good looking card, but nothing that's really pushing the envelope. And then finally for collectability, that is just how fun is it to rip these packs? Don't worry about the value. Pretty fun. Not quite as fun when you see a lot of backs of players because of the logo issue, but you got Chromium cards. They're fun packs to open, lots of different things. You can get hot boxes. There's going to be some sort of insert or parallel in every pack. You got autos coming out pretty regularly in the hobby packs. So overall, I think it's pretty fun. And for your PC, I actually think if there's one Panini product that you should buy, if you're collecting like the latest rookies for your team or something like that, the Panini Prism does belong in your PC of that player. So what we're going to do, we're going to add up all those points. And for 2022, Panini Prism Baseball comes in as a very good set, but barely at a 62.5. The positives of the set, we've got all the rookies in the base set checklist. You've got the tiered checklist. Some of those rookies end up being pretty rare and pretty fun chases. We've got all sorts of different autos. We've got all sorts of fun things, fun packs to open. The negatives, pack and production odds are up, no logos, and we have historically had some printing issues with Panini Prism. So overall, the set isn't for everyone, but if you Want a great alternative to the high cost of Topps Chrome? This is it. There isn't another set that's going to match Topps Chrome. You're going to get more autos out of a hobby box. It's going to cost you about half as much. And Panini does a great job of making some fun packs to open and make some really nice looking cards and some beautiful looking parallels. It's got all of that. So if that's the type of collector you are and you're not worried about the logos, Maybe if you're an investor, you want to stay away because you can't get top dollar on this stuff. I get it. But if you're a collector, this is not a bad set, especially for budget-minded collectors that are looking for autos. And for younger collectors, it's a very fun set to open. And for even some experienced collectors that are looking to add to their PCs, because I think Panini Prism belongs in that conversation. In 2021, interestingly, Panini Prism came in at a 73. It came in much higher. Now, a lot of that is because I believe that 2020 checklist that they had for the autos was actually a very good checklist. Not as much filler. And it just generally, as I looked at the scores side by side from this year to last year, I was a little bit more generous with the card quality. I could not be this year. And then... There was a little bit better on pack production runs and stuff like that. When we go back to 2020, it kind of falls in line with 2022. It came in at a 60, which was actually an average set. So for 2022, Panini Prism comes in as a low end, very good set on the one cent sensational set rating scale. How does it compare to all of the other sets that have been released so far in the 2022 collecting season? Well, it comes in 12th out of 23 out of the 
major releases that have been released so far in the card collecting season. So it does not crack the top 10. It's just outside of the top 10. So Panini still holds two spots in the top 10 with Immaculate at fourth and Select being tied for 10th. Panini Prism, like I said, it's not for everyone. I wish if they would have had more of those big rookies in the rookie auto checklist, I feel like it probably would have gone up probably more into the 65, 66 range, but you still got a lot of fun stuff to chase in here, guys. We also have another release that's coming out today, which is Topps Pro Debut. That is not included in this, so that will be the 24 set that gets into the ranking, so we'll see where that one lies. And with that, guys, let me know in the comments below if you think I got this rated too high, if you think I got it rated too low. Let me know if you're getting into it. I love to respond to the comments that are worth responding to. And as always, as you're out there in the wild, I hope that you are able to find Panini Prism on the shelves. And when you do, I hope you pull some fire. Until the next set review and next video, I hope that you will take care of your family, take care of your friends, take care of your neighbors, and most importantly, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again soon.